Welcome to our Before You Back series here on Quack & Co, where we take a look at every single board game crowdfunding campaign that has over a thousand backers and rank it on a scale of 10 different categories to determine if it is a safe, good, and reliable back. We're going to be talking about the publisher, the designer, the reviewers that they have on the page and what they've been saying about the title so far, the production quality that we can expect coming from the publisher, whether there's exclusives, any savings on what you're buying, whether the game is coming to retail or not, the general production schedule, and of course, if it'll hold its value when it arrives to you, and or if they'll charge you more between now and getting it. In this video, I'm breaking down The Last Lighthouse by Scott Alms. This is a solo game coming to the Button Shy series, and it's part of their Simply Solo campaigns. This is one of a number, I think seven total, that they've released now, all to very good reviews. I've played quite a few of them myself. They're very, very solid. In this one in particular, you're going to be defending the last lighthouse, well, the namesake. And there's going to be an opportunity to play with a variety of lighthouses based on the expansion that you're using. So you'll have various different asymmetric powers related to the lighthouse that you choose. You'll have a row of cards here, and these cards will have two main activations. Some will be used as traps, and some will be used as monsters. Now, both monster and trap cards are the same. When you defeat a creature that's trying to overcome your lighthouse to swallow it into the bleak expanse of nothing, you then will take that card back into your hand and be able to play it as a trap or an ability to use to continue defeating and protecting the lighthouse. It seems like a very interesting hand management puzzle with a lot of decision space around when and how you use your traps and abilities, what creatures you take out, giving yourself more opportunities and more actions to use throughout the game. If at any point your lighthouse is, succumbed, is subdued in darkness, it succumbs to the... I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but my braces are making it very hard. Let's use all the S words possible to describe this lighthouse. You get the point. If the monsters swallow your lighthouse, it falls to the bleak expanse of death that we'll all experience one day. If you're able to defend it, it shines its beacon of light out for another horizon until someone else tries to play the copy of your game and eventually fails. It does look like they've dialed in the challenge here, and I'm very, very excited about this. But it's not only me. I mean, this is the most popular campaign on Kickstarter right now at $116,000 raised and 4,000 backers. So the question is, is this game, well, a good back? Let's talk about the different categories. So the publisher is Button Shy. They get a 10 out of 10. They've put out so many remarkable games in the past. Not all of them are perfect, but I think all of them stand up on their own. They're accessible, easy to play, and easy to carry around. If you know what you're getting from Button Shy, you're bound to enjoy it. Scott Alms is going to be the designer of this. He's designed a lot of these, or if not all of these simple solo, simply solo games. He also has designed games for the Tiny Epic series. So Tiny Epic Galaxies, Tiny Epic Cthulhu, I don't know, the whole range of them that are out there. He's been involved in all, if not most, of those. I gave him a 9 out of 10. He's not a perfect designer, not one that I buy every product he puts out yet, but something like this, I'm really compelled. When it comes to reviews on this page, they have four cool core reviewers at the moment that they've linked with gameplays and videos. They also have a print and play option for the game yourself, so you could be your own reviewer if you'd like. I gave them an 8 out of 10 on reviews. Everyone so far is giving them very good remarks, and there seems to be a lot of excitement here. So you can see the four reviewers that they have. When it comes to production quality, I gave them a 10 out of 10, not because they're going to have crazy miniatures or upgraded components, but because Button Shy, you get what you get. If you've ever had a Button Shy game before, you know the production quality is very good. Uh, the cards are printed well, the games hold up well, but they're not overly produced, and that's because they keep a very aggressive price for you, the consumer. But when it comes to a game this size and this scale, they're probably some of the best quality in the industry. On top of that, the company hand packs every single game they ship out, so you can be sure that someone in a small team here in the States has taken the time to make sure your game is right when it leaves the door and comes to you. 
Moving on down, let's talk about exclusives. There aren't really any Kickstarter exclusives here. I gave them a 5 out of 10 on this one because the reality is, is it'll probably be available, and then at some points it'll probably be unavailable. It's kind of a come and go with the Button Track games. They put out so many that if the game is very popular, they'll usually try to keep it in stock and continue upping their production runs. But if the game just is on Kickstarter initially, it probably won't be readily available after it has that first wave of sales for at least a bit of time. Moving on down, let's talk about savings. The best savings you can get here is with this bundle. You'll get all seven or eight, I think maybe eight, of these Simply Solo games for $60. Saves you around $20 off the whole package because they average about $12 a piece, and if you buy enough, you'll get free shipping on their web store. As far as the game itself here, the best way you could save if you want to experience the game is to pay $3 for the print and play option, or pay $12, which is your standard price, and get it before anyone else. Really, you get the expansions for free as well, and they throw it into the campaign, so you're saving a couple bucks there too, because odds are, if you're going to buy it off the web store, you'd spend the extra 2 or $3 to get everything. It's not a very expensive game, so there's not a lot of room for savings, but they're certainly giving you a really good deal when it comes to buying the whole collection of games in the pile. I personally think that's where I, where I would direct my attention if I was new to the Simply Solo series and I like solo games and was compelled by the theme in this one. The ones in the past have all been very good. All different and not all perfect, but all very good. Moving on down, let's talk about production schedule. They put out a new game every single month. These guys have this handle. Production schedule is going to be a 10 out of 10. Now the question is, will this game end up in retail? I gave that a 5 out of 10. It's not Kickstarter exclusive, but it doesn't guarantee it will be in retail. It'll likely be available on their web store for some time, and if your store backs it, buys it, or has a stock of button shy games, there is a chance it'll be in some retail stores, but probably not mass distribution. So it's kind of a mixed bag there. It really depends on how well the game performs overall. Moving on down to holding its value. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I mean, let's be honest, with the free little expansions mixed in here, you're going to be able to get 10 or 12 bucks back from this game if you decide it's not something you want. And if it does end up selling out during a period of time, you might even get 15 bucks back if you're trying to sell it on the marketplace. I don't think many people are going to be liquidating their copy of uh, The Last Lighthouse, but it's worth keeping in mind, especially when you're spending a lot of money on a variety of Kickstarters this year. Finally, moving on down to the price. They're just pretty much straightforward here. It's as aggressively priced as it can be. From the extreme value on the uh, kind of overarching bundle to the print and play $3 option, I mean, this is just a really good deal. Button Shy does quality games. They put out, they put out great quality uh, you know, great, great quality games nearly, or not nearly, every single month. On top of that, they have a subscribe and save plan where those of you who would like to be in the Board Game of the Month Club will get a brand new game, the new game that they release every single month that it comes out. So, something to pay attention to if you this is a series and a game that you really like, or a publisher that you really like. So, let's add all these numbers up, which I'm not going to be the best at doing, so I'm actually going to grab my phone here so I can do it. Let's see if I don't run out of time before. I should have done this beforehand, but I didn't. 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 10 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8. It's going to give them a total score of 80. One. 81 when it comes to this ranking score is a really, really confident buy. Anything over 90 is like you're going to make a profit if you back it. Anything from that 70 to that 80 range is going to be a really good confident purchase, and this is no exception. Now, it might be available down the road, which is where some of those numbers drop off, so if you don't want to get it as quickly as everyone else and you're happy picking it up later in retail or off their web store, you'll probably be able to do that. But let's be honest. For $12 and to support a publisher that's giving you everything plus the kitchen sink, this is one that you should probably consider backing. And the good news is 4,000 of you already have. So I'm here to tell you, yeah, you're right. It's a good back.